Hey, everybody. How are you? Good to see you. Um, if you join, then uh, let me know you can hear everything and see everything okay. And <laughs> it's looking good. Um, awesome. Well, welcome. Uh, welcome to Thursday Night Live. Uh, we are on the Essential Truth series. We're going to do this as long as it takes. And I'm just so blessed to be here and share with you. And um, uh, oh, uh, my little dog just entered and uh, she heard me say hello. So she thought we were having a party. <laughs> Maya, you want to say hi to everybody? Huh? Come here. You want to say hi? Yes. This is the bean. Are you the bean? Yes, you are the bean. She's the bean, the dog who lived. We prayed for Mayan, and she had a miracle. She had seizures, and uh, we prayed over her, and she's all better. And um, God is good. God is good to us in every season. Yes, amen. Okay, now you've got to be quiet. <laughs> she's like, I wasn't prepared for that, Mom. Okay, all right, let's get started. Um, happy to be here with you guys. Um, let's pray. Just come before the Lord, the Father, and just close our eyes and center up. And just uh, go ahead and close off all the busyness of the day. Um, get quiet. Come before our God. Your hand is on us, Lord. Your hand of healing is on us. You never leave us. Your hand of compassion and loving kindness is on us, Lord. Thank you. Your hand of revelation is on us. You're going to open our eyes so that we can see. You're going to open our ears so that we can hear. You're going to reveal to us tonight, Lord, even things that I haven't prepared. You're going to reveal your truth and your love, your way, your life. We honor you and bless you and give you this time, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. All right, let's turn to Matthew 14, verse 15. Uh, we're going to read uh, Matthew 14, 15 through 21. All right. Um, I'm going to read from the Passion Translation. So if you don't have a Bible, just go ahead and sit back and listen. Later that afternoon, the disciples came to Jesus and said, It's going to be dark soon, and the people are hungry, but there's nothing to eat here in this desolate place. You should send the crowds away to the nearby villages to buy themselves some food. They don't need to leave, Jesus responded. You can give them something to eat. They answered, but all we have is five barley loaves and two fish. Let me have them, Jesus replied. Then he had everyone sit down on the grass as he took the five loaves and two fish. He looked up into heaven, gave thanks to God, and broke the bread into pieces. He then gave it to his disciples, who in turn gave it to the crowds, and everyone ate until they were satisfied. So I really want us to go back. We're just going to walk through this scripture, and we're going to say, First of all, let's look at, let me have them, Jesus replied. Let me have them. What is he referring to? He's referring to the loaves and the fish that were inadequate to meet the need. So he is asking for the seed. He's asking for what um, the need the need that the people have, the need that the disciples have. Um, and so they had to release it for this entire miracle to come to pass. We give him the inadequate amount we have in our hand. Is there a need in your life right now that you have an answer to, but only a small part of the answer? 
a glimpse, but the entire solution is out of your grasp. This is really, we're going to bring this to our own lives right now. I'm going to ask that question again. Is there a need in your life right now that you have, um, that you have an answer in a small part to that need, a glimpse, but the entire solution is out of your grasp? So Jesus is saying, let me have them. So our first thing to do right now is to absolutely surrender. Give him the need, give him the hunger, give him the care, give him that seed of faith. That's the only thing you have right now. And then you release to him the impossible. Amen. He says, let me have them. Let me have your cares. Let me have your prayer request. Let's turn to Psalm 23. I want to go ahead and look at this scripture, Matthew 14, uh, verses 15 through 21, um, in parallel with Psalm 23. So when we look at Psalm 23, it begins with, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Do you have a want? Are you in want? And this is what Jesus tonight is addressing. He wants you to give him your want. So we go back and just you're going to hold place in Matthew 14 and you're going to hold a place in Psalm 23. Coming back to Matthew 14 verse 19, he says, Then he had everyone sit down on the grass. And then Psalm 23, verse 2 says, He makes me to lie down in green pastures beside still, restful waters. He restores your soul. I love in Psalm 23 where it says, He makes you. He makes you. He's saying to you right now, whatever your name is, He's saying, let me have your need and then sit down. Have a seat. (laughs) Get in position with your need in my hands. Get in position. Get your focus on me, not on the need. You've released it to me. And sit down and relax in the grass. Watch me. Watch what I'm going to do. It reminds me of the scripture that says, Your only work is to believe in the one whom God sent. Jesus said that about himself. So let's take a moment tonight and really take a deep breath. Give him the problem that you don't have a solution for, that you need a miracle to see that uh, prayer request resolved and answered. And then get in position and sit down in the grass and watch him. I want you to picture Jesus. And I, I want you to picture yourself sitting in the grass. What does it feel like? What does it smell like? But most importantly, your eye is on the Savior of the world, the Son of God, the living expression of the Word of God. Um, I've been listening to a video series on YouTube. Um, The Lord led it to me. I I was so blessed that He did this. Um, He actually gave me a search. He said, search for stories of people who have been to heaven. And a couple came up, but one of them caught my eye and my spirit left. And I said, that's the one, isn't it? So I start listening to it. And it's a testimony of a gentleman from Canada. He was a pilot. And it was on a series, um, uh, Sid Roth, It's Supernatural. I'm sure anybody who has uh, watched those shows, you're familiar with how he does it. But this man gave us testimony And it looks like he just, Sid Roth didn't interview him, he just recorded him. And there's seven videos, and it's a lengthy, detailed testimony of a man who did not know Jesus, didn't want to know Jesus, um, thought that Christian people were um, uh, deceived, simple, and uh, he knew better. And he felt like when he died, it was like a computer, it just shut off. 
um, but there came a time and he did die. And I'm, I'm going to go ahead and put in the comments at some point a link to that so you guys can watch the series. It's not quick. <laughs> Seven videos and they're lengthy. They're about 30 minutes a piece. But here's a little transcript of that one of the videos that just really uh, I want to share with you because it blessed me. Um, but it's as you picture yourself seated on this beautiful hill, sitting in the grass, looking at the Savior, he has your need in his hand, and he's ready to do a miracle. Um, I want you to close your eyes right now and see this image of the Savior that this man saw in heaven, and he describes it in detail of what Jesus looked like. He says, we've all driven down a paved road on a summer's day, and we see the shimmer arise from the heat of the asphalt. And he's describing this figure that is standing in front of the warrior angel that had guided him there. The face of the figure was covered with that kind of shimmer. I was intrigued not only because of the shimmer, but as beautiful and magnificent as the angels were, this figure facing the tall angel was even more regal, more beautiful, more magnificent. As beautiful as the light of the angels were, there was a light that flowed off this tall, regal figure as though it was cascading out of him like a fountain. And it was a golden light that came off him and flowed down all sides of him, and it behaved like liquid light. It flowed like golden water. I watched in amazement this golden liquid light flowed down the slope toward me. I noticed that as it flowed down the slope, whenever it contacted the flowers and the grass that were already beautiful and in bloom, they bloomed even higher and more magnificently than ever before. I was so taken with this incredible being. I stumbled over to the path. The golden liquid light pooled around my feet. And as it did, my whole being was filled with the realization that the majestic regal figure I was looking at was none other than Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Someone I had thought was simply a Jewish legend, and here I am looking at him in all of his magnificence. The golden liquid love that flowed from him and pooled around me changed me forever. It truly did. I was in awe of what I was seeing and feeling, and I dropped to my knees in that pool of golden liquid love. The man's name is James Woodward. His book is called Heaven, An Unexpected Journey, and his YouTube videos as well. But as you sit in this grass that Jesus says, I make you sit down, Psalm 23, I make you sit down in green pastures. As you sit down and your eye is on Jesus and you see this beautiful sight that this man has seen as well, that the people who are seated there, the 5,000 plus women and children, saw the same thing. They thought he was a Jewish legend. He thought they were he was a rock star and he would do miracles and blessed by God. But something magnificent was happening and something was changing them forever. So let's go on in Matthew. So we're in Matthew 14. Verse 17, where am I? I got the wrong Bible in front. So verse uh, 14, um, sit down on the grass. As he took the five loaves and two fish, he looked up into heaven. And this is what the scripture says in the Passion, into heaven. I really want you to grasp hold of that image. So Jesus has the loaves and the fish, and he looks up into heaven. You know, the scripture says that, we are to bind what is bound in heaven and we are to loose 
what is loosed in heaven. So we see our Savior with our need in his hand, looking into heaven, getting ready to loose the miracle. And sometimes when you go through this, I, sometime I want you to um, not only picture yourself as the crowd on the hill in the grass, releasing their need, hungry, waiting for the answered prayer, but I want you to also picture yourself as the one who is holding the sacrifice, the seed, Jesus. He is in you. And I want you to see yourself in covenant, looking into heaven as he did in that moment. The covenant con connection that Jesus engaged in in that moment was essential in that moment. He wasn't just looking up in prayer, um, in a posture of prayer. This was a, a very intense moment of connection with the Father. And as we look at him looking up to the Father in perfect connection of covenant, looking into heaven, re ready to ask for the miracle, um, this is our opportunity to connect with Jesus as he connects to the Father. I'd like to read from John 17, verse 21 through 23 regarding this. John 17, verse 21. Oh, let's start at 20. My prayer is not for them alone. So I really... When I was reading this, I really sensed so many scriptures happening in this moment of connection. So many. Um, because in John 1, uh, right there, verses 1 through 5, it talks about how Jesus is the living expression of the Word. So when here Jesus is standing before the Father, looking into heaven, every word that is spoken in the Bible is being connected to the Father. Because right in front of you, right in front of these people, is the living expression of the Word of God. And he is speaking this prayer in that split second of time. He is expressing every psalm in that split second of time, that connection where Jesus, uh, his heart is connected to the Father in that moment. But I believe he was speaking this verse as he looked into heaven to the Father. My prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for, the, for those who will believe in me through their message. That's you. That's me. That's believers today in 2022 that all of them may be one, Father, just as you are in me and I am in you. May they also be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. I have given them the glory that you gave me, that they may be one as we are one. I in them, you in me, so that they may be brought to complete unity. This is the moment we're talking about, this, this brief second of explanation that Jesus looked into heaven. Then the world will know that you sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. Jesus is our essential truth, friends. He says, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life, and no one comes into heaven to the Father except through Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. He also says, if you have seen me, you have seen the Father. In that moment, there was a perfect reflection, spirit to spirit, um, if, if you uh, were, were at church on Sunday, Pastor John had this really great diagram of us and our 
entire being, spirit, soul, and body, and God. And then he kept connecting us spirit to spirit with a line in that diagram. Spirit to spirit. Well, this is Jesus connecting to Father. Spirit to spirit. We worship you, Lord, in spirit and in truth. And that's what Jesus was doing in that moment. And that's what we do. We come to him because of Jesus, because of that relationship we're seeing in this scripture. A covenant connection where every promise is secured. And what is Jesus's beautiful response? Thank you. And that's our response. Thank you, Father. He is holding our human ability in his hands. That's what the bread and the loaves are symbolizing here. Your human ability in the situation where you need a miracle, you need an answer, you need a fulfillment, you need a completion that you've been waiting on. He holds your human ability in his hands, connecting in covenant with the Father, which is where we are now. He holds our surrender in his holy, anointed hands. After he said thank you to the Father, which is again every psalm of praise and thanksgiving was just expressed in that one word, thank you, the living expression of the word. He says thank you. But right after that, he breaks the bread. Why? Why does he break the bread? Why doesn't he just grab that beautiful loaf, put it in the basket, and the miracle, doom, 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 doom. Have you ever thought about that? It's a good question to ask. Why did he break the bread? Well, doesn't it look forward to the covenant meal at the Last Supper where he broke the bread and he said, this is my body a covenant sealing, a covenant food that said, this is my body, take it, take it. Sit down, now take my body. And he distributed it to the disciples, which is exactly what he does in this. He gives the bread broken to the disciples. And then the disciples pass that bread along. And as we know, a miracle occurred. Seed time and harvest, instantaneous timing, loaves for every man, 5,000, and his wife and his children. Jesus offered the bread, and he's offering it to us to feed us, to complete the prayer. Mm. Thank you, Lord. Let me read you this. My need on earth is fulfilled always. Our prayers are always answered. Yes, whether it's for healing, deliverance, relationships restored, financial uh, needs that are met, whatever it may be, soul healings in our, in our mind, in our hearts, Jesus will meet that need. The scriptures and the promises say to us that he is the living expression. He promised, says that he will meet all of our needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus, our Savior. Once we're connected in covenant by believing, every one of those needs, our hunger in our belly, is fulfilled. But even so, our need for Jesus, the bread of life, is the real move of God. It's the real purpose of his distribution of the bread. Our lives are not weighed by achievements or answered prayers, but by the love of God and how much we, and I, I wrote consumed, how much of the love of God God, are you prepared to consume tonight until you're full, till you're complete? 
you know, this uh, gentleman that I've been listening to his testimony, he said that right after he saw Jesus, the angel pulled out a book and he said that it wasn't a very big book. And mind you, this man literally called out to Jesus in the moment of death and he was able to enter heaven. Um, This book recorded all the works he did. We are trees of righteousness planted by the Lord for his glory. And in that book, it, it showed all the works of kindness and and the, and the wonderful moments in his life where he um, had shown the love of God and displayed the glory of God. And his book was really small. And he said that it really was impressed on him that the kindness and the goodness that you show to others are recognized by Jesus. The small moments, the small things, the large ones, even the attitude of your heart concerning other people, all these things are recorded and played back for you. But our love and kindness toward others, it's only a result of how much love and kindness that we receive, that we partake in from Him. Your ability to have mercy on somebody else is only because of the mercy that Jesus crowns you with every single day. He crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies, Psalm 103. He forgives every one of your sins. That's the way we can forgive. That revelation and understanding that each day His gifts of of loving kindness and mercy and forgiveness and healing are new every single day. His faithfulness is from everlasting to everlasting. It never ends. I was looking up, I had a little moment where I said, Lord, what is the shortest psalm? You never know why you ask these questions, right? But it is Psalm 117. And this is just a little part of it, a little part of the little psalm. He has conquered us with his great love, and his kingdom has melted our hearts. His faithfulness lasts forever, and he will never fail you. Psalm 117. Isn't that the truth? We cannot feed ourselves We cannot, we could not die for ourselves. But in that moment of the loaves and the fishes and the miraculous working of our Father God through Jesus Christ, he shows us the relationship we now have. We surrender what we have, our inability, inability, our human ability. It's not enough. We surrender it to Jesus. He takes it. He enters that need into covenant with the Father, Jesus and the Father. He looks into heaven and there's a moment of acknowledgement and he says, thank you. It's done. I think what's notable too after this beautiful and wonderful part of the gospel is that right after that, Jesus got alone to pray. He had to leave the disciples and leave the crowds, and he went up into a mountain, got alone with his Father God, and prayed. And I believe that the Lord God was revealing to Jesus all the things to come. He was giving him plans, and he was giving him timing, and protocols and how to go to the cross. And I believe that he showed him in that miracle that at the Last Supper he would break the bread so that we could remember the covenant. Glory to God. I hope this blesses you like it blesses me. I hope that you will receive this and go back and 
read Matthew 14, 15 through 21. Just meditate on that yourself tonight. Take some time with Jesus. It's time to surrender it all. It's time. You've been strong. You've been um, a person of good ideas. You've been a person who's done a good job. And God is proud of you. But he wants more. And he wants you to give him the little that you have so that he can feed 15,000 at least. Let me pray a blessing over you before we leave. Thank you, Lord. Lord, I pray a blessing over, to, over the ears that are listening right now. Lord Jesus, you said after you quoted Isaiah 61, this scripture has now been fulfilled in your ears. And I pray the same thing. This scripture that I've read has now been fulfilled in these blessed ears who are listening. I thank you, Lord, for giving them boldness and courage to release the seed, to release the human ability in this situation that's on their mind. I thank you, Lord, that Paul writes, your grace is absolutely all that's needed. That we can release what is vulnerable, and your love takes that place, your grace fills that place, and it's better than anything we can ever imagine. So in this place, in our heart, Lord, fill it to overflowing. Fill us till we are full. Fill us so that we are trees of righteousness planted by the Lord for your glory that people will see the light of Jesus Christ, the love light, the love light liquid, like that gentleman said, Lord. It'll pour out of us as we're filled more and more with you. We give you the glory tonight, Lord, for all these things in our lives. In Jesus' mighty name. Blessings to you. Uh, if you caught this a little late, then just wait a few minutes and uh, we'll have it up on the Christian Faith Center videos. Um, all right. And I will add that link for the YouTube video of the man's testimony of going to heaven. I believe that everything he spoke of is scriptural and it's an exciting testimony. It really gets us uh, in the right perspective, the right alignment about what our lives are all about. All right. God bless you guys. Good to be with you. Bye-bye.